STV News with Sandra McCallum and with sports, Ray Morrison. Good evening. A crush of refugees 70 kilometers long has gathered at Iran's border with Iraq. The official Iranian news agency says 900,000 Kurds have already flooded into the country. That's in addition to the hundreds of thousands trying to flee to Turkey. Jonathan Birchall reports. From the back of an American helicopter, a winchman throws cans of powdered baby milk to refugees on a mountainside in northern Iraq. It's safer and more accurate than dropping heavy crates by parachute. And the helicopters can go where transport planes cannot. Hovering feet above the ground, the helicopters edge up the mountainside when the refugees get too close for safety. One pilot described this as the most remote terrain he'd ever flown in. They're operating unarmed in Iraqi territory, but they're backed by fighters unseen in the skies above. The helicopters are desperately needed to speed up the movement of supplies. Trucks can't get up the mountain roads, and there's a backlog of aid building up. Today, it was just three helicopters from the U.S. Navy. More will be arriving in Turkey tomorrow, brought in by warship along with 2,000 American Marines. Soon, there'll be American soldiers on the ground in Iraq, too, supervising the distribution of aid. The Americans call it the biggest military relief operation since the Berlin airlift, and it's deepening American involvement in northern Iraq. U.S. President Bush is warning that he won't tolerate any interference with relief efforts for refugees in Iraq. However, he will not allow any American troops to be drawn into the fighting between government troops and rebels in Iraq. ...repeated his vow not to put U.S. troops in the middle of Iraq's civil war. But he assured Iraqi refugees that non-military aid is on the way. We will continue to help the Iraqi refugees, the hundreds and thousands of victims of this man's Saddam Hussein's brutality. To see food and shelter and safety and the opportunity to return un unharmed to their homes. We will not tolerate any interference in this massive international relief effort. Iraq can return to the community of nations only when its leaders abandon the brutality and repression that is destroying their country. The chief of the United Nations peacekeeping force in the Persian Gulf says maintaining stability will be the most difficult job of all. Austrian Major General Gunther Grendel arrived with the UN delegation today in Kuwait City. The UN forces will replace coalition troops in the Gulf. Meanwhile, U.S. forces are moving out of the region. Ottawa will provide support for the families of Canadian soldiers sent on a tour of duty. Associate Defence Minister Mary Collins says a new support program will be established this year. Collins attended an official welcome for returning soldiers at CFP Cold Lake, Alberta. She said the $16 million the government will provide for 80, million, uh, for 80 family support centres across the country will come from Ottawa. $600 million was set aside for the Persian Gulf War. I'm Ray Morrison. It was Game 6 in all four Wales Conference playoff series tonight, so obviously some teams were facing elimination. We'll let you know which teams have worn their jerseys for the last time. Sandra? Thank you, Ray. The threat of a Soviet economic collapse is growing. A six-week miners' strike has brought parts of the steel industry to a halt, and separatists in the Republic of Georgia have stopped fuel shipments reaching Russia from Black Sea ports. There is no sign of a let-up by more than 300,000 striking miners whose political demands include the resignation of President Gorbachev. The newspaper Izvestia says the strike slashed coal output in March by 82 percent. That sent shockwaves through other sectors of the ailing economy. A fire burning on a foundering oil tanker in the Mediterranean is turning the spill into smoke. 
Three explosions rocked the burning, partially sunk tanker off the Italian Riviera today. Port officials in Genoa worry the ship may break up and spill the rest of its cargo. It was carrying almost 155 million liters of crude oil when it exploded Thursday. Italy's environment minister says if all the oil leaks out, it would create the worst ecological disaster in the history of the Mediterranean. Still to come in news, a hay shed fire blazed on the outskirts of Saskatoon today. Stay with us. Quality Records presents Today's Country Gold, Volume 4. An incredible new album starring Dan Seals. Sensational Rodney Crowell. Waylon Jennings. Willie Nelson, George Jones, and Shenandoah. Next to you, next to me. Dolly Parton. Why'd you come in here looking like... Today's Country Gold, Volume 4. Only from Quality Records. And it's in stores now. When it comes to dryness, other maxis can stay wet on top. But always has dry weave. A patented top sheet with specially designed pores that help keep the surface cleaner and drier. No wonder more women choose always with dry weave. Dry weave. The cleanest, the driest, the best. Next to this new sock, that's dingy. Introducing ultra small, ultra powerful, ultra tied with bleach. With other detergents? Forget it. One small scoop of new Ultra Tide with bleach cleans deep down and whitens down to the fiber itself. Whitens better than any leading detergent, and it's safe for colors. Now I look at other people's whites and I think, I could get that whiter. New Ultra Tide with bleach whitens better, whitens down to the fiber. Let's take a look at the future. Where am I, Al? Where are you? Uh, oh, St. Louis. October... 1957. How'd you know that? I'm Future Boy, remember? Quantum Leap, Wednesday at 8 on STV. A large hay shed went up in flames today, creating a thick plume of smoke that could be seen for miles around Saskatoon. The fire occurred two kilometers north of the city, and as we hear in this report, damage could be quite extensive. Spindly posts are all that remain of a hay shed that went up in flames like a tinderbox today. The blaze occurred on property just two kilometers north of Saskatoon off Highway 12. The light wind spread the fire towards the house and the dry land was quickly devoured by flames. Smoke seeped from the burnt soil, creating an eerie spectacle for those battling the blaze. A friend of mine was uh, working on a boat at the, uh, at the big hay shed, and uh, then he came running here. Apparently, it, uh, the barn or the hay shed had caught fire, and we called the fire department right away. The Saskatoon Fire Department responded to the alarm along with firefighters from Martinsville. It took about an hour to get the blaze under control. Well, there's two new cars in there and a boat plus the hay, so uh, they're both cars are uh, owned by other doctors that stored them here. The owners of the vehicles are out of town and it's unknown whether they have fire insurance coverage. Investigators are still trying to determine the exact cause of the blaze. A concerted effort is needed to maintain and improve ambulance service in our province. This according to the president of the Saskatchewan Ambulance Association. George Bullock made a number of recommendations at the 32nd Annual Convention of the SAA. More in this report. The delivery of ambulance services in Saskatchewan should improve over the next five years. Members of the Saskatchewan Ambulance Association have agreed to develop a strategic five-year plan, which will also call for changes within the organization. We are still a developing industry, and I think maybe we can do more for a little more. But definitely the industry cannot do more for less. 
The Saskatchewan Ambulance System has an annual operating budget of $22 million. User fees account for almost half. There were calls for a balance in fiscal responsibility for the delivery of services. It's recommended the provincial government expand and enhance the program of providing subsidies to those who need an ambulance. The CAP program would include seniors as well as other users. Uh, we're seeing that it's beyond the senior, uh, just the seniors alone, that that program should be expanded to incorporate all residents of Saskatchewan. In Saskatoon, the manager of MD Ambulance is pleased with the emphasis on increased education and training. A uh, new paramedic program has been announced to uh, be held in Saskatchewan, which we're happy to hear um, between the, the new paramedic program and the priority dispatch system that we have in Saskatoon. We're better to deliver the the best resources to the citizens and um, for be a better patient outcome. Currently, there appears to be a gap between the Ambulance Act and the Highway Traffic Board Act. The Ambulance Act indicates that only an ambulance can transport patients. The Highway Traffic Board Act will allow other vehicles to be transported and allowing them to uh, sort of transport persons that could conceivably be patients uh, that would require ambulance transport. The SAA feels the legislation should be reviewed and amended to ensure the ultimate best interests of the patient. Police in Portland, Oregon say the gunman in a department store hostage taking has been killed. They say two officers were also hurt in the confrontation with the hostage taker. Police say the gunman fired first and was killed by officers' return fire. One police officer was wounded in the arm, the other in the leg. Both hostages were unharmed. In Mississauga, two people are dead after a man gunned down a woman before taking his own life. Simon Dingley reports on this latest act of violence in the metro Toronto area. More violence against women, this time in Mississauga. A woman is dead after being shot at least three times near a busy Cooksville intersection, the corner of Dundas and Kerwin. No, I couldn't believe my eyes. Like, this is the stuff I see in the movies, you know. Didn't Rick Juneman works at a nearby gas station. So I was pumping the car, and uh, I heard a big blast, and I looked over, and there was a black man standing like this over a woman, and he shot her again. And that's when I ran inside and called 911. Did you see anything else? Yeah, while well, I was on the phone with uh, 911, he came back, and he shot her in the head, and then he went back in between the two houses. No suspects in custody. At the present time, we're not looking for any. Do you think it was a domestic? I can't say it's a domestic, but it appears that it might be uh, some sort of a uh, relationship between two people. You, the gunman shot the other person and then it took his own life? Is that what you're saying? That's apparently what's occurred. Police removed a shotgun that was found beside the dead man's body. This man also witnessed the murder-suicide. And as I was talking to the police, there was a woman screaming on the ground. She was holding, I think, I, I think she was holding her leg. We looked out, and the man comes out with a long gray coat, walks up to her, and about uh, a foot away from her, pulls out a gun, and as she's screaming, he blew her away in the face. Police aren't sure what caused the man to kill the woman, but one thing is certain, another woman has died at the hands of an angry and perhaps uncontrollable man with a gun. Simon Dingley, Global News, Mississauga. Coming up in weather, sunny skies will prevail for the remainder of this weekend. Stay tuned for details. Here are the Daily Deal winning results for Saturday, April 13th, 1991. The Ten of Spades, the Six of Hearts, the Seven of Clubs, and the Ace of Diamonds. The Daily Deal. High stakes, license to thrill. It's winter. Let the games begin. Winter fun. Brought to you by Labatt's Blue. It's the way we play. I guarantee it. Jubilee Ford. That was me a few years ago. And today, I still guarantee it. Our lifetime service guarantee means you only pay once for a covered part on your Ford-built car or light truck. And then if that part ever fails again, I'll replace it free. Free parts and free labor. Service special for all Ford and Mercury vehicles, motorcraft shock absorbers from $29.95 each. 
Well, I bet you I'm going to be a big star. I might win an Oscar, you can never tell. The movie's going to make me a big star. Join Ray St. Germain for the best in local country music on Big Sky Country, Sunday night at 10 on STV. Look out, Saskatchewan. There's a storm warning. Get your season ticket package before the Saskatchewan storm rolls in with a thunderous burst of WBL action. Hold on and take cover at Saskatchewan Place with 25 regular season home games, adults 175, seniors and students 125, children 12 and under 87.50. Storm watching the ultimate in family entertainment. Experience the fury for yourself or share a package with a friend. Don't wait for the buzzer. Pick up the phone and call 931-DUNK to reserve your Saskatchewan storm season ticket package today. Welcome back, everyone. It was another beautiful day today, and the good news is it is going to continue. Let's take a look at current conditions in Saskatoon at this hour. Partly cloudy skies with a temperature of 8 degrees. We reached a high of 14 with a low of 0. Winds out of the southeast at 11. The barometric pressure 101.8 and the relative humidity 35%. In North Battleford, partly cloudy skies as well with a temperature of 7 degrees. A daytime high 2 degrees better than ourselves at 16 with a low of 1. Winds out of the southeast at 19 kilometers. The barometric pressure, 101.6, and the relative humidity, 45%. Let's take a look at uh, conditions around the province this evening. Larange, clear skies with a temperature of 8 degrees. Prince Albert, the same temperature under partly cloudy skies. Lloyd Minster, 7 degrees. Kindersley sitting at 4 degrees under partly cloudy skies. Swift Current, 4 degrees as well. Yorkton, cloudy skies with a temperature of 5. And if you know anyone in Regina, right now there is rain and snow that they're enduring with a temperature of 2. Across the country, Victoria, 12 degrees under cloudy skies. Vancouver, a bit uh, cooler at 10. Edmonton, 12 degrees. Calgary sitting at 9. Light rain in Winnipeg with a temperature of 6. And Yellowknife, a cool 1 degree. In eastern Canada, Toronto and Ottawa both sitting at 4 degrees. Montreal, 3 and 1 degree in Halifax. Fredericton 3 and minus 5 in St. John's under cloudy skies. Now let's take a look at our forecast. Just a few clouds this evening with a low near zero. On Sunday, you can expect mostly sunny skies tomorrow with a high of 14 degrees, so it's going to be much the same as today and a low of 1, exactly the same as a matter of fact. And on Monday, getting back to work, now we're expecting mostly cloudy skies. There's a chance of showers and perhaps even some light flurries, believe it or not. A high of 11 degrees, though. The chances don't look too high, though, as the probability of precipitation is 0% tonight, 10% on Sunday, and 30% on Monday. And that is all the time we have left for the weather. Ray Morrison joins us now with sports. A thank busy you. night. You me? betcha. And we've had our first playoff casualties as well. Oh, so okay. thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. The Boston Bruins have received a little bit of a surprise from the Hartford Whalers in their Adams Division semifinal. The Whalers won the opener at the Boston Garden. Then Hartford took game four to tie the series up at two wins apiece. In game five, the Whalers played solid hockey for the first 40 minutes, trying to cling on to a 1-0 lead. Of course, it didn't work. The Bruins won 6-1. But tonight, Boston wanted to put the series to bed and not let this series go to a seventh and deciding game because, as they found out, anything can happen. We'll check out some of the highlights now from this hockey game. The Bruins open the scoring. Chris Nyland leaves the puck for Nevin Marquardt, who puts that one in, and that makes it 1-0 for Boston. Later, the Bruins go up by a pair. Bob Sweeney takes the pass at the line. Moves in and then goes upstairs on Peter Sidorkovich, and that makes it 2 to nothing for the Bruins after one period of play. In the second period, Vladimir Ruzichka picks up the puck. He sends it into Dave Christian, who tucks this one in, and it's 3 nothing for the Bruins after two. In the third, the Whalers try to make it interesting. Dean Evison takes the face off, brings it back to Mark Hunter, who lets the drive go. He beats Andy Moog to make it 3-1, but that's as close as the Whalers would get. The Bruins go and congratulate Andy Moog, as they should, because he made a lot of saves in this series. There were a lot of games when the Whalers did outshoot the Bruins, but the final was 3-1. to one. The Bruins win the series 4-2. to two. Mark Ward, Sweeney, and Christian for the Bruins. Mark Hunter scored for the Whalers. Let's move on to Buffalo. The Canadiens and Sabres in Game 6 of their series. Second period, no score. Denny Savard will keep the puck in. Brent Gilchrist will be all alone in front of the net, and he shovels that one home to make it one to nothing in favor of Montreal. Later, the Canadians get sloppy in their own zone. Dave Snuggerud stops the puck, and then Rutu sends it in to Snuggerud, who sends it in, and that makes it 1-1. Later, the Canadians are shorthanded, but watch Shane Corson. 
pick the pocket. Suddenly, he finds himself in all alone on the breakaway. Right through the pads, 2-1 to one in favor of Montreal. Shortly after that, the Sabres take a penalty, and the Habs go up by three. Schneider to Cassells, into Corson for his second. That makes it 3-1 after two. Early in the third, Denny Savard takes the centering pass. He makes no mistake there to make it 4-1 Montreal. The Canadiens had one more for good measure. Strudland sets up Richet. 5-1 to one in favor of Montreal. The final score, the Sabres get one last fight in. Of course, they won't need those jerseys anymore.